and welcome to Coffee with the Clares. Uh, though you may notice, just one Claire tonight. I'm missing my co-host. Last time I couldn't make it. This time, unfortunately, Claire's not very well. Um, but I do think she's watching at home. So Claire, I hope you get better soon. And I can't wait for you to join us on the next live stream. So tell us where you're from. Say hello in the comments. I'm all by myself here. Actually, no, I'm not. I've got Gavin and Sam behind the scenes doing all of their super technology. They'll be putting up the comments so I can see them down here. So say hello, tell me where you're from. Have you had this crazy heat like we have in the UK? Um, we're not used to it over here, we've been melting. Um, but yeah, say hi, Sam. Have we got any comments? Here we go, yes, so hi from Torquay. Hi Keith, lovely to see you. Charlie, hello from Connecticut. Hello, thank you for joining us. So it's evening here in the UK, morning over in the US. Um, hope you're all having a wonderful day. So we have a really exciting show today. We have a wonderful photographer that's going to join us. Uh, we'll wait for a few more of you to join and come on in and then we'll be inviting him on to the sofa, which is feeling a bit lonely these days. Um, but tell me what you've been up to. Uh, we've been at Bird Fair recently in the UK. So we had a, a great show. Um, met lots of lovely customers and some great photographers from all around the world. So that was last weekend um, and we had a really, really great time. So let us know if you went to Bird Fair. Did you come and say hello to the guys on the stand? Um, greetings from cent central Italy and 40 degrees. Michael, we had 40 degrees. I don't know how you cope with that all the time over there. Um, and I was just in Italy like two weeks ago. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, OK, so without further ado, I think we're going to jump straight into our special guest for the evening. Uh, he is from the UK. He is here in person with us. He's a wonderful landscape photographer um, and also astrophotographer. And his name is Tom Ormrod, who you would have met before on one of our lives. Um, but before I bring him on, let's take a look at what he got up to on his amazing adventure in Iceland. <laughs> Wow, that just looked incredible. I want to go to Iceland. I mean, I wanted to go anyway, and now I saw that, and I want to go even more. <laughs> it was quite the experience, I've it got looked. to say. It was, it, it, it was an experience of a lifetime. So, you know, we, we will spend the next however long talking about it, but wow. I'm still recovering, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I am still very tired from it. It was a very, very long trip. Um, um, and we'll talk a bit more about it in, in the next few moments, but um, yeah, an, an absolutely outstanding experience. I mean, it looked, only that one minute snippet where we saw some images at the end, and we're going to take a, a proper look at some more of Tom's images, and you can ask him some questions. Um, and if you do have any questions as we go, drop them into the comments. We will pick them up as we go along. Sam's going to wave a question card at us, um, so we will be grabbing them as we go. <clears throat> so please drop them in. Um, but it just looked just out of this world. It yeah. was amazing. So you went with one of our wonderful European ambassadors with Moises. Indeed. I think Moises is in the comments. So hello, Moises. Hi, Moises. Hope you're having a good time. <laughs> um, and I've seen some snippets from Moises on social media as well. Yeah. How did you go about planning a trip like that? So if anyone wants to go on a photographic trip to Iceland and you rented a camper van and, you know, how do you go about doing that? So Moises and I um, were talking a few months ago now um, and we were saying, you know, we really want to do a trip. We really want to go and 
show off the, the new OM cameras and we said, well, where should we go? So we decided on Iceland. We, we banded a few ideas around and we talked about some hot places <laughs> and all the rest of it, but we decided, no, let's go somewhere that's, let, let's go somewhere that isn't too hot at this time of year. And um, we, we thought, let's go to Iceland. Let's go to yeah. Iceland in the summer, because this is the Icelandic summer at the moment, um, which it's, we say summer. It was, um, we, I think we had everything from about minus two all the way through to about 18 degrees. So, nice. <laughs> so you know, uh, basically like, like British summer normally is. Yes. So, so yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Uh, not at the moment, though, unfortunately. No, no. Um, so we, we banded some ideas around, and then we just sort of said, "Look, let's go to Iceland." Um, so we had a couple of um, we had a couple of uh, live uh, uh, WhatsApp chats, and then we did um, some FaceTimes together, and we just sort of discussed some, some ideas of where we'd like to go and what we'd like to do. Obviously, there's loads of well yeah. photographed places in Iceland. Everyone, any landscape photographer has seen pictures of Iceland. Yes. Any photographer has seen pictures of Iceland. Many people that have never been to Iceland have seen pictures yeah. of Iceland. But it, we were like, but we want to do some of the traditional stuff, but we want to try and find some places that are less well visited. So by doing it in the summer, you can get access to the centre of the island, as, as they call the, the highlands. Okay. So this is normally completely, um, completely under ice and snow. You can't get there unless you've got a modified vehicle. So we were like, no, we want to go to these highlands. We want to, we want to do some of the classic stuff as well, but we want to go to the highlands. So we spent some time, obviously, Google is your friend in these yes, instances. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and some of your contacts are as well. So it's always good just tapping up your contacts and asking some, for some advice. Yeah. Um, so we settled on Iceland and we, when we started talking about it, we, we were like, well, we, we, don't wanna, we don't wanna be restricted by hotels. <laughs> Um, you know, we don't want to be based in a location. We don't want to do any of that boring no, stuff. No, no, staying no. in luxury and, oh. and going to the Blue Lagoon <laughs> where you can sort of have face masks and all. No, we want to we want to experience Iceland in a different way. So um, we hired a camper van for for a week. Amazing! We saw it in the video. Absolutely, and it so cool. Um, so the camper van is uh, was a specially modified four x four. Okay. So if you want to go to the Highlands in Iceland, you have to take a four x four. Yeah. Um, they don't actually allow two wheel drive vehicles there at all. So you have to get a specially modified 4x4 camper van. So okay. when you go to Iceland, usually you see lots of people driving around in, um, in just converted transit vans yeah. and those sorts of things, which are converted into basic campers. But that's no good for the Highlands. You need that 4x4. So it was just driving around Iceland in the 4x4 was actually just great fun. I'm not going to lie. Looks, I mean, look at it. It, it looks was, really cool. It was so fun. I mean, this is some drone footage that um, I think Mo Moises took this bit of footage um, on his drone. And it, it was just amazing to be able to drive through this barren landscape. I mean, we would drive for hours and yeah. you'd see two, three, four cars and that's it. Just the um, landscape around you looks and, incredible. Yeah, it? It, it, and you know we're driving through literally what feels like another planet. Yeah, you know, going through this sort of black desert, full of volcanic rock and uh, and dust. Driving into what was one of the, the most beautiful areas. I think this area is called um, Pack Gill. Um, and yeah, absolutely, um, uh, absolutely mind blowing. This 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 footage was probably taken at around about eleven o'clock at night. Wow. Um, it was uh, you know it was this is when you really realise that it never gets dark there in and the summer. And that's the thing, I was like, yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about some Astro, and then we're like, no, nope. we're not going to talk about some Astro. So a lot of people do go to Iceland for, um, they, you know, they, they want to go to Iceland for, for, the, um, Northern for, for the Northern Lights, yeah. exactly. But during the summer, it is the land of the midnight sun. There is no, there Incredible. is no night. Um, and so we were, we spent hours just driving through the, the, these sort of, bizarre wildlands that have, have got no roads. As you can see, we're driving down dirt tracks. Basically, um, Tom, you never slept is what I'm getting. And to be honest, we didn't sleep. Well, when we did <laughs> sleep, we slept during the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, so we basically became nocturnal um, because nocturnal is actually when the best light was for yeah. a landscape photographer. You know, we had, we had sunsets that lasted three, four hours. Wow. We had sunrises that lasted three, four hours. And in the, in the middle, we had a little bit of blue hour. But it, blue hour was like two or three hours in the middle. So we just had this beautiful light for, you know, some, somewhere between 10 and 12 hours of the day. It was fantastic. So because in the UK, you're so used to like sunrise being that short window, yeah. making the most of it all you can. Obviously, winter, you get that bit longer, but you've just got to get as much as you can in that very short space of time. And having all of that time, how do you not just stay in one location? Yeah. And just want to take pictures of that for those hours. It was it was a battle to sometimes leave a place. Yeah. Um, you'll see some photos coming up in a minute of, of a particular area right in the middle of the highlands called Lamanaluga. Um, 
uh, forgive me if I get the pronunciation wrong, still haven't got it to this day. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so you'll see some, f some photos from that. And I'll, I'll be honest, it was a real battle to sort of drag ourselves away yeah. from there because we went on a, a hike there um, and it was, it, it was just phenomenal. And we probably could have got done another two, three, four hikes there. But we wanted to try and fit in as much as yeah. possible. The whole point of this trip was it was a bit of a road trip, you know. We went with some, some specific plans and some, some must-dos. Yeah. And then after that, we agreed that we would just wing it. <laughs> um, and um, and um, we'll just ha go where the weather is. Yeah. Because the problem is, is, is wow. well, problem. the problem. I suppose the glory of it yeah. is, is that, that the weather is so changeable. Yeah. You can be in glorious sunshine, you can be in a hailstorm. It, it, it changes all the time. So we, we, would, we did quite a lot of weather chasing as well. And for anybody that goes there, absolutely make sure you've got um, a good quality app from the Icelandic road um, authority, which shows you which roads are open and closed. Okay. So that's really, really useful. Yeah. Um, and then also use the Icelandic weather apps because okay. obviously they're accurate. Yes. Um, but there are some other good ones. One that I always talk about things like Venture Sky, uh, which shows you like um, uh, like the cloud maps above the country as well, okay. which is really, really useful that's to work really out. Yeah. Well, there might be some sun over there, so we'll head over that way. Yeah, really, really, just a, a well, phenomenal place. And how long did you go for? So we spent, um, we had seven nights in the camper van. It was actually okay. eight days, but it was seven nights in the camper. Um, and we did a full loop of the island in those, in those seven days. Um, it was about 2,000 kilometres. Uh, it was a lot of driving, um, a lot of shooting, a lot of walking, and very little sleep um, for, for seven days. So there was no luxury involved, <laughs> but... What an adventure. Who cares? You know, it, we walked away from it on so many, so many occasions. And Moises and I just kind of looked at each other and just go where do we start you know well, yeah. what what is this place you know it it was just it was amazing and that's another question actually how do you turn up in this incredible place i know i'm you know i do it you turn up and you just start going <gasps> and you start clicking and and you know how do you evaluate a scene and go right this is what i want to do first it's um the the very first location we went to which is called oh now you're testing me kirk <laughs> kirk Kalingafell. Yeah. Um, uh, Kalingafell, um, it's a geothermal area in the Highlands uh, along the route uh, that's the F35. And both of us, you know, this was our first major location. Yeah. We'd stopped at a couple of other locations along the way, first major location. And I've got to say, it was. It was a little bit overwhelming to start yeah. with. I think there's a bit of footage somewhere in, in all of our stuff, and, and Moises and I were just, I was filming, and Moises was looking at me, and I can hear his voice in the background saying, this is overwhelming and yeah. it's exactly how it felt. So the first thing that we do is, number one, have a bit of a walk. Don't just stop yeah. because the, part of the problem is you, you see something beautiful and you go, I've got, I've got to take a picture of this. But often you'll find as you're moving around an area, the, you know, you'll get a different view. Uh, things will look different from a different yeah. angle. It'll be more and more beautiful. So don't stop at the first place, I think, yeah. is, is, is one of the most important things. Secondly, try and... I suppose close it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Don't don't always think about that huge wide expanse. Focus on some smaller areas. Yep. Maybe time to get out a slightly longer lens sometimes when it's too overwhelming. Absolutely. I love this this shot of you guys. <laughs> and your choice of clothes here was also apparent, a bright yellow coat and a bright red coat. You uh, planned well, that, right? Of course, yeah, of course. We know we, we know what we're doing. I know? did see that we had a question pop yep. up. Darcy, Iceland has become so popular. Has the popularity affected one's ability to enjoy and photograph? Hmm, good, good question. It is a really good yeah. question. And I must admit, I was affected by it slightly. Okay. And, the, I, I, and I'll tell you where. The, place that I, the places that I enjoyed the least were the most photographed places. Ah. So, were they good, busy mm, as well? well? Did that affect I, it? Yes and no. Okay. So, um, so I think for me, one of the most sorry, the, the least enjoyable parts of it was the classic waterfalls. Okay. So you see a lot of waterfalls in, um, in, in, in Iceland. In, whenever anybody goes to Iceland, there's loads of pictures of waterfalls. Don't get me wrong, they are awe-inspiring, they're huge, they're massive, they're exciting. But at the same time, trying to do something different with them or yeah. trying to really... I, I spent more time just looking at them and appreciating them mm -hmm. for the beauty that they were rather than spending hours trying to take a photograph of them. Yeah. Because Everyone's taking photographs of them. And I actually spent a lot of time 
just just enjoying the moment, I suppose. Yes. And, and I think that's very important when when you do go to somewhere like Iceland. It's not just all about the photography. There is, you know, you do have to enjoy the scenery. It's that you've so got. incredible. You just have to sit and it, take is, it in it's a little huge. bit. It's huge. You know, yeah. it, some of the expanses they're massive. So, um, in relation to the busyness point, mm -hmm. yes, it did get busy at times. Okay. But as a photographer, getting that good light meant that we were shooting all the way through the night. Yes. And actually. All the tourists don't seem to do want, want to do nocturnal shooting. Like nine, ten, uh, yeah, seven so, o'clock so in the morning. Basically, from nine o'clock on, yeah. nine o'clock in yeah. the morning, all the way through to sort of like eight o'clock at night. Yeah, it's busy. Yeah, but if you're shooting from eight o'clock at night till eight o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you're on to a winner. You're on your own. <laughs> exactly. So you had, you know, we, we turned at some places like um, Stockness, which is one of the most mm. the most uh, well known waterfall. Yeah. Um, not Stockness, sorry, uh, Skogafoss, which is one of the most impressive waterfalls yeah. it's 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 like um it's like a fairy tale you know it's got that sort of rectangle Beautiful. Yeah, it looks yeah. amazing um uh, and hopefully we'll see some photos of it at some point um that um it just a beautiful rectangle um but we got there at six o'clock seven o'clock in the morning and to be honest we saw two other people i think and that was it photographers photographers yeah. of course yeah <laughs> and, and then as we were leaving we could see the car starting to pull yeah, up yeah, and yeah. everything, and we were absolutely. like, we're out of here, see you my later. My favourite time of the morning oh, when I'm away, or absolutely anyway, amazing. it's just yeah, that early amazing. morning yeah. for the light, but also for the, the quiet. Absolutely. And it's yeah. fantastic. We have another question. Did the, coast, uh, did the coastal fog present any difficulties driving? No. I mean, you had all weather conditions. We did, but we didn't have any fog, I don't think. Oh. I don't think we had you any had fog. everything but fog. I don't think uh, I, I'm questioning myself now. Moises, I'm not going to lie. Did you have fog? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You know, running on about four or five hours of sleep <laughs> for seven days. It felt um, a bit foggy at times. Yeah, it did feel a bit foggy at times. Um, but we shared the driving and took rest. Um, took took rests all the time, so it was all absolutely fine. Brilliant. We took loads of breaks. Yeah, it was all good. Um, but it was it was. Um, very changeable yeah but no fog was not a problem for us thankfully okay brilliant so we are going to take a look at some of your images gav's going to pop them up on the screen could do like an interlude song yeah do, do, do. here we go oh this is incredible i think we saw a glimpse of this in yeah. the footage at the beginning so this i think is still my favorite spot of the trip it may not be my favorite photo but it was definitely my favorite spot of the trip it looks like a painting it uh, just looks that I, I actually posted a copy of this on my instagram um i think about a week ago yeah and that one comment came up so often yes, it was unbelievable it does. because it's incredible it was such a it, it was such a landscape this is about halfway up um the, the side of a mountain i think it was called blanca which is the blue the blue mountain mm -hmm. in, in this place called la manaluga um, it's a very popular hiking area, only accessible during the summer. Um, as you can see, you know, still loads and loads of snow. This yes. is the summer, but it's still loads and loads of snow. You went in June, didn't we you? We went, uh, la um, it was actually the first week of July. Okay. So we were there, I think, the 3rd or 4th of July wow. we were there. So um, th this is, you know, there's a glacier just up the, um, not far from here that you can just about see in the middle here, the, the glacial river, the braided gl glacial river there. Um, but to see this... To see this um, uh, bizarre landscape, the rhyolite mountains, mm. I think, the, 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 the mineral. Um, I mean, unfortunately, from this picture, you can't get the scale, but it, it, literally, people were walking all over here, and it, it was just absolutely mind blowing. We, I, I probably have about 50 different shots of, of slightly yeah. different <laughs> angles. Because a little bit wider, a little bit, bit more wide. Exactly, in. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I just couldn't stop taking pictures of it. It was something like it was. It was an unbelievable it view. It was, We've had it was a, amazing. some good comments. Darcy said it was her favourite picture for sure. Um, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's it's utterly incredible. It, like it was a classic landscape shot. You know, you, you you just turn around, you look out across the mountain range, and you see that in front yeah. of you, and you just you, there's no. Unfortunately, I would love to say this was really a really skillful shot. This one wasn't. This <laughs> I one, planned it. This one here was one of those time. ones which you could just 
I, I would. Did you I would roll hope. out of the camper van and go? <laughs> Not quite. Click. Don't get me wrong. We, we did walk quite a long way to get to this already. You know, uh, Moises and I were we were already getting quite warm by this point because yes. this this day was actually quite. This was probably the warmest day we had, around eighteen degrees. Brilliant. Um, and, and what lens did you use for this one? Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to say it was the twelve to forty five f four. Okay. Um, and um, I think it was yeah, I think it was twelve to forty five that one. Um, uh, yeah, just just to crop it in, you know, yeah. it wasn't super wide, but just cropped in a little bit to um, to sort of remove some of the. Uh, if you look to the left, that sort of went back towards the campsite and okay. started to get a little bit less less aesthetic. Okay. So okay. yeah, it was and we're going to take a look at the kit that Tom took with him shortly once we've looked through a few more images. But we do have another question. Jack said, oh, yeah. "Looks like a fantastic trip." How is it shooting with golden hour light for so long? Um, hi, Jack. Jack's um, local to me um, from, from down in Dorset. Uh, also a great landscape shooter. Doesn't shoot OM systems, but we won't hold that against him today. Do you know what? There's always time to convert him, I know. Especially we'll, after yeah. he's seen these beautiful images. Exactly. But um, uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, so it was, um, it was quite... Uh, it, again, it goes back to that word, word overwhelming because you, all, you wanted to make the most of it, but at the same time, you didn't want to spend almost too long in one place. Yes. Because actually, because you do have golden light for four hours, you know, you, you want to make, you don't want to just stand in one spot. In, in the UK, we're so used to, um, or most of Europe probably, we're so used to just going to a spot for a sunset shoot or going yep. to a spot for a sunrise shoot. But actually, in, in, on a number of occasions, um, when you saw the, the footage earlier of us driving through the mm -hmm. um, uh, through the sort of wilds into that into that um, into that beautiful green area, that was actually us transferring between two spots in golden hour because we knew we had, you had hours to spare, literally hours to spare. That's a great thing to have to be able <sighs> to hit, get so many spots. A photographer's in that, paradise. In gold, it's, it, it is yeah, photographer's incredible, paradise. Incredible. Yeah. Let's take a look at another image. Remember, you can follow Tom on Instagram. Gavin can run the little ticker at the bottom. I think he's been having it going. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm making him do too much at once. <laughs> <laughs> so this was actually taken from almost the same location, quite narrow again, but looking in the other direction. Okay. Um, and this is the, the river that we saw in the middle of the other shots, but this is just zoomed in more. I think this was with the 40 to 150 f4. Um, so just zoomed in a bit more onto it um, to just to show you the detail of this glacial river, and the way the light was just coming across it. We had that day. You know, this is this was one of the few shots I took during the day, wow. but we had. Um, the beautiful light where the clouds were just rolling over all the time. So we're having all these lovely shadows cast into the landscape. And it was just a, it was just a moment. And in this shot, you can see in the, in, in the bottom left, you can see a tiny little uh, house, a hut, just to give you some scale of, oh, of wow. how big this place was. Incredible. Um, and yeah, it, it was just amazing to see this beautiful glacial river. And as you zoom back out, you'll be able to see in the far distance um, you'll be able to see the uh, that sort of almost bluey purpley area at the back. Yeah. That's actually a lava field. So that's actually wow. where the lava had come down from a volcano in the past. And they've actually now built a road through it or a dirt track through yeah. it. Um, um, but it stopped at the river. Um, so Incredible. and this was actually if if we had another shot, the, the, the grubbier bit in the middle where the campsite is actually. So <laughs> you've actually got a lava field on this side. And then on the on the other side of it, there was a, another lava field and the campsite was actually just in front of the other lava field. So a really amazing, amazing spot you know, to be, be walking life. through this sort of area. We have another question. Mary, how do you manage the contrast of black rocks and sand and white snow and any advice for minimising the impact of dust? So how do you manage the contrast of it all? Um, I'm not going to lie, so these were some of the hardest images to process really? at times because there was, so, there was either too much colour, too much contrast, um, and, and you know, the, the light to the dark was just insane. Yeah. Um, I have some of the shots I did bracket, I did, okay. uh, did the exposure bracket. Um, I did, for a very few, I did use a, um, a graduated filter, but okay. I must admit, I barely used my graduated filter at all throughout this trip. Okay. I'm slowly weaning myself off them, shall we say. <laughs> um, it's, it's a, it, we'll talk about it in a bit, but um, you know, reducing the weight in my pack is yeah. becoming, becoming more and more important to me. 
as I'm increasing the length of the hikes, the, the pack weight needs to go down a bit. Yeah, and glass absolutely. filters, although they are optically beautiful and, 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 and can help in situations like this, reality is with a bit of exposure bracketing, or in some of these instances, I didn't even need to exposure bracket. Okay. Using things like Live ND and handheld high res yeah. mode, there is definitely a little bit more dynamic range in, in the sensor of using those. So you can really, really draw out the colors. But um, yeah. they are really, I've got to say, I, I really did struggle to, <laughs> to um, process some of these at times, absolutely. Fantastic. We have another question. Trevor, do you always use a tripod for your landscapes? Mm -hmm. Or do you rely on OM image stabilization handheld? That's a good question. A good question. And I'm in the mo at the moment I'm actually doing some um, doing a bit of writing about my trip so I can remind myself of what happened on the trip. And one of the one of the, the sentences I wrote um, just yesterday was um, for me the tripod is now redundant. Almost. Almost. <laughs> um, and that was the sentence that I wrote because I can I, can I can I get rid of it? No, I can't. Is okay. understand, so I can't get rid and of why it. Is that? I can't get rid of it mainly for there are two reasons why. Number one is for super long exposures. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 image stabilization of the camera is phenomenal, and and, and it for me I, I, this this trip blew my mind, and, and we'll show a picture later where I actually did a handheld for five seconds, which was amazing. But I still can't do a thirty second handheld. So have I, you tried? I, I probably on. well. I've, I'll put it this way: I've tried to do a ten second, and it didn't <laughs> it didn't end well. Um, so. Uh, yeah, a 30 second exposure, I still need a tripod okay. for. The other occasion where I do still use a tripod is when I am waiting for the moment, maybe. Okay. So I could be, it could be like, I've seen a shot, I want this shot, but the light is just not right yet. Yeah. Or the wet, I'm waiting for some clouds to pass or something. So because don't I don't want to sit there. Yeah. I, and I, I, I've nailed this shot and I will still use the yeah. tripod in those situations. Okay. I'll set the tripod up, I'll put the camera on and then you know, Moises and I did it on a number of occasions. We'd, we'd pop the cameras there and then we'd sit down and have a chat and, yeah. and, and, and watch the beautiful landscape and wait for the right moment. I mean, we spent uh, one, one um, golden hour into sunset, um, stood on the side of a volcanic crater, um, pointing our cameras at two other volcanic craters in the distance as the sun was setting behind them. Um, and we must have spent two hours up there wow. because we were waiting for the right light. Yes. That was one of those moments where we just wanted to wait because it was just an amazing scene. And actually during the time we were there, because uh, we were sat there with the tripods were set up, the cameras just on it, we just sat and had a chat. Uh, I say sat and had a chat, you couldn't actually sit because actually it was on the side of a very <laughs> loose crater. Um, and actually during the time, two other photographers joined us. So oh. they, they'd been driving along the dirt road, seeing us way up on the side of this volcanic like, crater. They must, they must why, good, why are they up yeah. there? What, what's the view up there? And they came up and it was really nice. And it was really nice. We had a great chat with oh, them. Brilliant. And it was an Italian chat, uh, Italian chap, an American chap, oh, um, who were doing the same, visiting Iceland, taking yeah. photos. And they said, you know, we saw you, so we thought we'd come and have a look at the view. And yeah, it was great. And, we, 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 and I think that was something I did take away from the trip. You know, often the photography community can be a great source of information yes. uh, and let's be honest when we're all out there doing what we do nobody cares about brands or anything like that we're just out there enjoying the moment chat, yeah. yeah and it was amazing it was it was really great and we, we met loads of people like that whilst we were there it was great brilliant fun. and of course moises does a lot um, of images we see him in the image absolutely so yeah. um i imagine moises is who he is <laughs> and look here's moises here's walking, moises just moises like walking gavin up a, planned it walking up um, this is where you shout of, run moises run yeah run, run, there, run. He goes. there he goes there he goes um but yeah, so that's handy to have a tripod for that if you, you, know, if you want to be in the image as well for Correct. some reason. Often, um, I mean, you know, I, I don't shoot with people in, 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 the, in the landscape as much as Moises does, but um, he certainly sort of, he, he certainly encouraged me to do so. And actually, uh, there are definitely moments where I, I can actually see, I can, not actually, I can absolutely see the benefits yeah. of it. The, the scale that it adds. Um, that one going round with you guys in the middle with the red yeah. and yellow coat, that just showed scale one of, the, one of the things, so um, I don't know if Gav's got the picture of the, um, of the, of the green little mounds um, at Stock Ness. He's getting um, there. He's getting there, thanks Gav. Um, so that one is one that's really, really hard to get the scale. So when you, when you see people 
post f f images yes, from this I location. Yes, I that is incredible. It's a classic, it's a classic um, uh, Icelandic image. Yeah. This place, Stockness, with Vesterhorn, the mountain range, you see this all the time. This is one of the few classic places that I absolutely loved. I, I, it was an amazing place. But I always thought these little green mounds were tiny. Absolutely tiny. Well, we were stood on the top of one oh, of them. Oh, that was the shot. Yes, yeah, so oh. at the beginning where you saw the, the green, yeah. the, the sort of the drone circling around us. So they're actually, wow. some of those are actually really, really big. You don't expect um, it when you see no, that you don't. image, you saw, do you? You expect them to be little molehills with yeah, the green on it. But they're, but they're not, they're, they're huge. They're wow. basically big dunes of some description. Yeah. yeah, so here we go. You see, wow, you see you're incredible. standing in the middle of one. I should add that there was a path up to the middle of it. We didn't we didn't tread through a through through one to stand on it. I don't know why I thought that was I don't know swamp or water or yeah, I, I don't know why I thought just that was black around sand, you. Black sand, black sand with these Steve beautiful says green it is, it's um, uh, these beautiful green mounds and it, it, yeah amazing place. We uh, this was one of the few places we spent hours. Yeah. So we actually arrived we actually arrived at uh, before sunset golden hour. Yeah. Uh, one night and we actually stayed there all through the night to sunrise wow. and we stayed up all night and we did pop back to the camper van uh, just for maybe an hour hour and a half downloaded some pictures off the camera onto onto the phones and the laptops um, and then went straight back out again and wow. caught the sunrise and then we drove off around the corner and we actually caught a view of it from the other side as well oh, so yeah a really really amazing place Brilliant. yeah so this place Stockness Vesterhorn uh, um, Stunning. It's one of yeah. the few areas in the whole of Iceland that we had to pay for entry to. Oh, okay. um, so it's actually privately owned. Um, but the entry fee isn't significant. I think it was uh, maybe six pounds or something okay. per person. So it's not, it's not, a, it's not a big one. Yeah. And in comparison to all the other money that it, it costs to go to Iceland, fuel, etc., you know, Iceland is not a cheap place. No. Camper van hire is not cheap. Um, driving around is not cheap. Food's not cheap. So um, actually, six pounds for for for, yeah. for entry to here, which which wasn't a problem, you know. It was um, and to to be able to sit stay there all well all the yes. way through the night to do photography. I was mean, amazing. it's incredible, and I love like the tracks through. Yeah, you can see where people lines. are walking and it's, everything. It's like yeah. I, I did a while ago. You know, I, I did consider Taking maybe that. having having a whole Photoshop session to try <laughs> and remove them all. I love it. I, I think it's brilliant. Well, and, and that's what I decided in the end. I decided yeah. I wasn't going to because actually it goes back to it reminds me of the fact that we were there when it was completely empty. Yes. And there's, there's nobody removed from the shots. No. This was empty. There was Moises and I, I think two other photographers and Beautiful. that was it. So and the scale of this place was huge. So it was amazing. We have another question. Going to Iceland next month, bringing a wide angle and 14 to 150 zoom lens for my MFT camera. Is a longer lens needed? Good question. Um, I'll show you my kit bag in a minute with all the stuff that I took. Yep. Um, I did actually take an extra lens with me. I did. So I'm going to show you my kit bag. And there's one lens in there that um, I took with me that is not in my kit bag today. So the lens I took with me was my um, version, the, the F2.8 40 to 150 with a two okay. times converter. Okay. I took that for one reason and one reason alone. Yeah. Puffins. So I'm a landscape photographer, <laughs> you know, I enjoy the landscape. You but, are now a wildlife photographer. But when somebody says to you, you can go to this place, you can drive to this place and you get out of your car and there's puffins there. Yes. You've, you've got to go and have a look. Of course you do. You've got to have you're a look. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 and what a great combo. 40 to 158 with the two times is Yeah, brilliant. so I did use that. But okay. that was the only time I even considered needing more than that 150 mil, which okay. is obviously 300 mil equivalent. Yeah. Um, that was more than enough. More than enough. Now this looks... <laughs> Incred like we questioned you whether you took two images, merged them together. Is that an American road, Mount Fuji? What did you do here? And you said no. I will, I, and I, I'm going. I, at some point, I will post this on my <laughs> socials. I will post the raw file. Okay. And I will so post that we the, the you. edit. Okay. So everyone will believe me. But this was the actual scene. There is, is no. Beautiful. There is no Photoshop here. There is even in the middle a little bird flying through the scene. This is 100% legit. I see that. Yeah, 100% legit. No Photoshop trickery at all. That is um, incredible. Moises and I were driving between locations. Uh, honestly, I can't even remember which two locations <laughs> they were because it was it was just it was a, some very very long days. But we were driving to, through two two between two locations, and um, I, we were driving down this road, and 
I looked in the rear view mirror and I said, I was driving at the time, I said, I just, I, we've got to stop. And Moises was like, well, why are we stopping? I said, just look in your rear view mirror. And he looked in it. And you saw that. And he saw that. And we got out. And the, the joy of Icelandic roads, especially early in the morning, there's nobody there. No. <laughs> so literally, we hadn't seen a car for ages. We knew that we could stop our car, get out of our car, go and take these shots. I mean, we, we must have been here for three or four minutes, not long. Yeah. Um, but that view was just mind-blowing, you know, just to have that. I mean, you can tell it's not a Photoshop job because look how wonky those white lines are down the middle. <laughs> if I had Photoshopped that, I would have made You'd sure have they were straight. straight white lines but in, they yeah. are proper hand-painted <laughs> white lines down the middle of that road. They are wonderful. Um, yeah, it was, it was really, really good fun. So yeah, th that one for me was was just, it, it was one of those moments. Yeah. And they're sometimes the best, aren't they? The, the, I love it when you just look in the mirror and you see something, you're like, <gasps> stop, stop the it's car. It's the worst time than when you can't stop and it's beautiful uh, and you're like, <gasps> Yeah, absolutely. So that was one of the joys oh, of this. Oh, fantastic. Um, so yeah, being able to just stop and take that shot yeah. and, and it being not on any plan or on any map, it was just a moment. And yeah. There we go. That was that. And we have another question. Were all the tourists in campers or was lodging available? Um, so... You could tell, shall we say, the people that were there for a bit of an adventure and the people that were there to enjoy Iceland as a, as a tourist destination. So, Hold on though, I'm all for adventure. I also like, you know, a nice hotel, <laughs> Airbnb, a shower, hot shower. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can do Iceland and you can do all of that <laughs> stuff. Um, you can go to, uh, if, if ever you Google Iceland Blue Lagoon, you mean you, you, seen you, it, can't, you can't get any more luxurious and touristy, all in, wrapped, wrapped up in one. Um, but... Um, there were lots of lots. You know, there were lots of lodgings or lots yeah. of hotels. A lot of the campsites also did um, bunk houses. Oh, okay. So you could literally rock up there in a in in, in a hire car yeah. just with a sleeping bag, and you could get um, either in a, a bunk house. So you might have eight beds in in, uh, yeah. in one area, or many of them now also have more private ones with okay. two or four beds in it as well. So you don't. So that it's it's not. Don't get me wrong. It's not a hotel. It's on a campsite. It is a. It's a cabin. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you don't want to do the whole camping thing or the whole camper van thing, that is an option. And uh, all I would say though is, if you do go with that option, it's best to to book them. The okay. campsites generally you didn't have to book, yeah. but the bunk houses there's limited. You know, there's yes, limited amounts. So um, yeah. So but. Where, was everyone in camper vans? There were certainly a lot of camper vans. Oh, yeah. Vans. It's, were... it's, it's part of the adventure, isn't it? It, it looks absolutely, amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Shower? What? Yeah. Moises, did you not shower for seven days? <laughs> um, it was quite funny. Two of you in a camper no, no, van? No, oh, no. dear. I, 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 it got to the point where, where um, shall we say, we had to find a proper campsite with some good quality showers. Were you showers. like, Moises, I think it's time it's that time, we yeah. showered? Um, <laughs> as I said to Moises, I said, I said I can operate on little sleep. I can operate on, you know, little food. But every now and again, I need to have a shower. Uh, otherwise, I, it's, ju <laughs> it's just, no. It, you know, I am, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the age where I just need to be clean every just now and again. Just need to be clean every, every few days. <laughs> every few please. days, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, so, yes, there's no shower in, there was no shower all yeah. in there. But to be honest, you know, we, we, we campsite hopped. You know, and like I say, because you're in one of these, you don't have to book the campsite. You literally just rock up. Some of them were some of them were were better than others. Yeah. But generally, you could rock up, a, you know, in the middle of the night, pop pop the roof, sleep, and then go and pay them in the morning and drive off. You know, and, and job done. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was it was probably about for a camper van for two people per night, it was about twenty five pounds a night. Okay. So it was it was fine. No, you know, you could use the showers and you could use the uh, the toilets and and basic washing up facilities and things like that but but th no this isn't euro camp there, are, there there's, there's no slides for the kids there's <laughs> there, there's no football ground or anything like that this is you know, these were these were very traditional basic campsites yes. but that was the fun of it yeah that absolutely that's what made it such an yeah, adventure absolutely. do we have another question no we're moving on to some more images Oh, we're going to look what's in the bag. Gav's run out of images. Go, go. <laughs> go, because we, we do want to talk about some more images, but we'll we talk do. about we'll those do them with afterwards. features. That's it. Let's so, have a look what's in the kit bag. Kit bag. Right then. So this is what you took. This was... And some clothes, so obviously. So, obviously, this bag, um, basic... Well, I say basic, it's actually quite a nice one. It looks um, like quite a fancy it bag. It is quite a fancy say. bag. Um, but um, this, it's not a big bag. I mean, look how... It's a lot slimmer than I am. 
Um, you know, it, 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 it is a very slim camera bag as far as camera bags go. Um, it is the Ath Atlas Athlete. Um, and this was what I generally took out on most day hikes with me. So, uh, start with the obvious, the of camera, course. the OM-1. Um, I didn't shoot exclusively on the OM-1, but okay. I, show, I sh probably shot, I don't know, maybe 70 to 80% on the OM-1. Okay. Nice. Um, majority of, of the time I was shooting with one of two lenses. This one that was on there, which is the 12 to 45 f4, and the other one, which is this one, which is the 8 to 25. Um, I shot exclusively, apart from the puffins, apart from the puffins, on the latest three um, zooms. So okay. the 1245, the 825, and the new 4150 f4. Um, reason for that was just mainly weight. Yep. You know, it's the size and the weight. So, if I mean, anybody... that's incredible. Just looking at, you know, those three lenses together covers you. That is the complete range. To 150 mil. Yeah. So it's... 24 to 300 yeah. equivalent, you know, Fantastic. which is amazing. And this one here, I mean, well, the three of them together with the camera body. Yeah. I did weigh it because I'm quite sad about that. <laughs> I wanted to know. No, that's good. I was uh, so, so the three lenses plus the camera body and a battery um, is about. Uh, 1,700 um, 1, grams, 1.7 kilos. 1.7 kg. Yeah. So Incredible. to have all of that in, in the kit bag for 1.7 kg. Such a wide range. Amazing. Absolutely. Um, and, I, you know, these two were certainly the, used the most, the, um, the, the 8.25 and the, the 12, 12.45. Um, but the 41.50 amazed me how much I used it, actually. Yeah. So a lot of the shots where you needed to sort of really sort of zoom in on some of the details, um, Get, get rid of some of the noise that was there, yeah. you know, so making sure that you didn't see the car park that was to the side of somewhere yeah. or something like that. You know, that, that was really, really useful. Um, and if anybody's used the uh, 4150 2.8, they'll know that's a significantly larger lens than this one. Absolutely. Um, so, like I said, I did actually take that lens, but I, but I literally didn't take it out of the bag apart from the puffins. Yeah. Um, because this, this optically was as good as um, the, 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 the f2.8 version. I could not see any difference in the photos. They, it, it, this was an amazing lens. Um, this one, was, it was actually the first time I've shot with this one. I used to shoot mainly with the 7 to 14. I was going to say, what made you choose um, 8 to 25? But actually, this gave me a lot more, um, a, a lot more um, uh, versatility. Yeah. You know, it stayed on the camera a lot more. I didn't have mm -hmm. to change so often because getting up to 25 rather than 14 made a lot of difference. Yeah. And also, just simply having um, the, the, the thread for polarizer. Yeah. Because one thing we didn't mention, actually, is one of the things I did use an awful lot still in, in Iceland was a polarizer. Um, and there's a lot of glare in places, the, the snow, um, so a polarizer was needed. Even though I didn't end up using my glass filters very often, yeah. um, I did use a polarizer okay. an awful lot. I didn't use the NDs or the, the grads. Um, I also carried briefly, um, so I also generally always carried um, the uh, EM5 Mark III. Um, I carried this as a second body. Uh, and I often uh, mounted the uh, 4150 on it, um, just as so I had that longer range ready yeah. to go at all times. Um, so what I would end up doing is actually mounting this camera. Um, you may or not may not be able to see this. Hopefully you can. I have a little clip on my rucksack here, and the camera actually mounts onto the rucksack strap. So this camera so it's like sits here sits your, on my shoulder, on yeah, shoulder. exactly. Okay. So, so I, I carried the camera pretty much all the time on that. All weather conditions? All weather conditions. I mean, hailstorm in a lava field, yeah. no problem. Um, dusty, horrible weather as we were hiking up a mountain, no problem. Yeah. Um, it just stayed on there all the time. Um, so it was ready to go. And then in the bag, I would keep the, um, the, the, yeah. the Mark, the, so the M5 Mark III with the 4150. And I was surprised when we spoke earlier about that you took a second body. I was, I was expecting you to say you took like an EM1 Mark III. Yep. But you chose EM5, and that was purely for its weight. portability, weight, and yep. still having the image quality that Absolutely. you know you're going to get. 
So image stabilization, image quality, yep. all fine. You know, I mean, there are some features that are not included in that, which is obviously, yeah. oh, you know, it, <laughs> it, is the, it is the middle camera rather than the top end camera. Yep. Um, uh, probably the, the, the feature I would miss the most as I moved down to this one was probably the live ND okay. and the handheld high res. Yep. Still got high res shots, but we would have to get the tripod out and plop it on a tripod, yep. which, was, was, which I did do a couple of okay. times. And then also had room for, you know, um, still had room in the bag for a drone. Um, and then um, a waterproof layer, uh, which was very, very important because Snacks. literally uh, it would rain all the time. Snacks and water. Um, and just to, to mention, um, I did take a tripod. So that would also be in my bag um, yep. for longer exposures mm -hmm. or if we were setting up. And one thing I'd always recommend for landscapers is to use spikes on their tripod because um, it does make a much more stable platform with, with whatever ground, ground you're, you're on, be it rocks or sand or yeah. anything. It's, it, the spikes are fantastic. Okay. So, um, yeah, the kit bag, that was basically it. There was one other thing that was always in my kit bag, which was this, um, which you may or may not be able to see, um, which is um, uh, a power bank. Uh, standard power bank, when well, I say standard, it's actually a very, very high power, power delivery power bank. Okay. 65 watts, um, and it um, could charge my laptop, it could charge my drone, it could charge my phone, and most importantly, it could charge the EM1, uh, so the OM1. Fantastic. Um, so one of the things that I was really worried about when I got the OM1 was the availability of batteries, mm -hmm. initially, <laughs> um, and... Um, and uh, Initially, I was slightly worried about the fact it didn't have a charger in the box. Oh. Because as it has I'm a charger in the box. It has a charger in the box, but of it doesn't have a battery charger. charger in the box. It doesn't have a separate, separate battery, charger. battery charger in the box. But honestly, I'm glad I didn't need it. And I, I didn't want to use it because yeah. I carried this with me at all time. And so in between shoots, charger. I could plug my camera into here and it would charge my camera between shoots. And I've got to say, I barely ever did that because the battery just lasted yeah. so long, I barely had to use that. There were occasions though, you know, we, you know, we, we had to plug it in. So really, really would recommend yeah. that to, a, you know, having a good quality power delivery power bank to, to anybody. Yeah. Fantastic. Really, really useful. And you also took some um, backups with you, some hard drives. Yeah, so. Which I was blown away by the really So tiny two one. little hard drives I took with me. One standard, everyone's seen these backup yeah. hard drives, bit ruggedized, you can drop them, they're fine. But also, um, an SSD backup hard drive as well, which is obviously a lot, lot lighter. Um, this one's, I think, it's, this one's only 500 gig, but you can get four terabytes, yeah. I think, these days or whatever. But 500 gig was more than enough for me. Um, so this is super fast. Uh, this one was, uh, so the little one was super fast. The little one um, plugged directly into the laptop, yeah. and I would take images directly off the camera straight through to that to back them up. But I would leave Perfect. them on the SD card as of well, course, yeah. uh, uh, so I've got them in two places whilst we're out and about. And I use the bigger one just for backing up larger files like video, etc., when yeah. I needed to. But yeah, um, all good. The only other thing to mention, um, which kind of it completes the trio, I suppose, which is this, which stayed in the van, uh, which is a, a high power charger. So to charge all the, like the battery pack and everything yep. when we were near a plug, obviously with a, with a European plug, um, this is a 65 watt charger. So it could charge the camera again, yep. charge the laptop. I mean, USB-C is just it fantastic. Could charge your everything. charger. Charge my charger, charge my drone, <laughs> everything. USB-C is just fantastic. I cannot, I, you know, I can't say how much yep. that has changed it. You know, it's yeah, been incredible. amazing, yeah. Brilliant. We have a question. Was the power bank charging off of the van? So yes, so um, the, because we had a camper van, we obviously had a leisure battery in the camper van. So um, the power bank would charge from either the, the, the 12 volts yep. cigarette lighter um, type device or from the, actually in the back, it actually did actually have um, a, a plug in the oh, back as well. Brilliant. And I think uh, Moises who um, uh, brought a, a, a a DC inverter as well, so okay. we we've, we even had an extra plug in the front, so Being really really useful. Is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, pa don't get me wrong. Power was was something that we were really worried about at the yeah. beginning. That how much how much can we um <laughs> you know if we're going to these all these bizarre places with yeah. no access to power, are we gonna have, you know are we gonna run yeah, out? Of we didn't run out of batteries at all. Amazing. You no, know, you no know, drones, everything. We're all charged. Yeah. Cameras were all charged. Um, and it was just, yeah, Brilliant. there was no issue whatsoever. Fantastic. So, shall we take a look at those images we were talking about? 
So yeah, so we um we thought we'd um show a couple of images maybe that, that highlight some of the features yes. that I relied on yep, whilst absolutely. I was out in um out in Iceland. And I've got to say, you know, Moises and I, I mean please do check out Moises' Insta. Um you know, these were two we're going to talk about, well, I suppose, three features in, in particular. Um, there are three features that are really, really used all the time. I think, firstly, let's talk about um, in-body stabilisation. Yep. Incredible. Um, so in-body stabilisation uh, for, for, the, for the camera was, for the OM1, is mind-blowing. So this isn't my favourite photo I've ever taken. It's not the best photo I've oh, ever it's taken. it's beautiful. But it's so moody and I love just... It was a moody day. Yeah. And this is a five second exposure completely handheld. Wow. Um, no tripod, just stood on the side of this little cliff. Um, a, a, a bit of a breeze as well. A little bit of a breeze. Okay. Um, but a five second exposure, wow. completely handheld. Yeah. Um, which, honestly, it blows my mind that I can even attempt that yeah. shot, to be honest. That's um, incredible. And it was, it was, I mean, you, you can't... You, oh, we've got Claire Harvey May in the Hello. comments. Hi, Claire. Hello, Lovely Claire. image, Tom. Um, you, 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 you know, this, this doesn't show the scale, and I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll see one of Moises' shots from this area that was, was, which was brilliant. You know, it show, really showed it's the scale amazing, of it. It's amazing, isn't it? But this, but this um, was um, uh, just really to show the, the IBIS, the in-body yeah. uh, in -body image stabilisation, was vital. You yeah. know, the amount of shots I took at, uh, five, uh, well, Majority of my shots would be taken between 0.5 seconds and two seconds. Okay. And I reckon I've probably got somewhere in the region of 90% keepers wow. from those, from those. Which, you know, yeah. to say that I get 90% keepers, and you're always going to lose some through a, oh, I've just slipped, or oh, you know, um, oh, I got distracted by yeah. something, uh, puffing. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so, but for the majority of it, yeah. the in-body in image stabilization is Incredible. just amazing. It just blows my mind. Um, that hopefully is a nice segue into um, um, some live ND. Yes. Because not only does the in-body stabilisation enable us to, to, to take longer exposure shots handheld, the live ND features of the OM-1, and is, you know, the, that is yeah. in, 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 other cam in other cameras as well, it's in the EM-1 Mark X, uh, EM-1 3. X and the EM-1 Mark III, um, the live ND is. And the live ND, uh, you know, it simulates, it's an electronic, it's a computational version yeah. of ND filters. And I can't quite remember what the shutter speed was on this one. I think it was around 15, 20, 30 seconds. I can't wow. remember off the top of my head. But um, that was just done. This was actually shot during the day on an overcast day um, of this huge rock. Um, if you zoom into the image, you can see right in the middle of the, of the rock, you can actually see seagulls. Tiny little white dots uh, in the <laughs> middle there, just sort of lingering yeah, on the edge of this are. rock. See the little um, so yeah, using the live ND features, no ND, no, no glass ND filters were needed. Yeah. I just pointed my camera, turned on the live ND um, function, pressed go, and that was it. It just um, means you can, you, like we said the, about travelling light. Absolutely, travelling light, and not only travelling light, travelling. You know, you've got the flexibility yeah. with you, so. I don't go, oh, I've left my filters in the car. No, it doesn't matter. I've got doesn't them matter, built into the camera. It just looks like glass, doesn't it? Absolutely. It, it, was, a, it is, was an amazing, is incredible. amazing little bit, that was. Moises, this shot is so yeah. good. It thanks, is Moises. Mate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, we, we spent quite a... We, um, so happy I copied, <laughs> copied you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Comp stomp all the way. Comp stomp all the way. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was one of those ones where we... We were just stood there, and I said, "I've got to do a long exposure." It was, it was that sort of yeah. mood. It was that sort of and you overcast. knew you walked up to it, and you yeah. knew, and you were like, "This that, needs that is a long you know, live ND. Uh, live ND, make it look like glass. Yeah, you know, make, get the reflection. Incredible. Um, and, and and cut out all the sky. You know, yeah. there's no sky there. It's just literally just as it goes." Uh, someone said, "Love doing these long exposure shots of water. Great work, Tom." Thank you very much. Yeah, and we were obviously elevated above it, so yeah. you know, because we were elevated above it, it you know, removed any yeah. sort of distraction. Incredible. Um, um, so we, we, were, we, we had a bit of a choice as to whether or not um, 
we went down to the beach or stayed up top and we chose to stay up top and I'm really glad we yes. did now because it, it enabled this shot. You got happen. rid of the sky. It exactly, was... yeah, we were shooting down. On and was that done with a longer focal length? Was that done with a 40 to 150? Oh, it's challenging. I can't remember you know. off the top of my head. I think it was 1245. Okay. I think that was with the 1245. Um, just enough to sort of crop it in around the edges because you're not actually that far away from it. Okay. Um, uh, at some point we'll put up on socials or something around yep. some behind the scenes shots of where we were stood so you'd actually be able to see there the image. Fantastic. And I think I've got one more which is in relation to handheld high res which yes. is probably the other feature which I always always rely on. Okay. Um, do I need handheld high res? That's a good question. Do I need it? No, I suppose I don't need it. Of course it. you need it. But do I love it? Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, I love having the ability to, um, I love have the, having the ability to just up the detail level a little bit by, by putting the handheld high res on and, and, and shooting um, a landscape one like this one. And that um, is beautiful. This, this again was, was just one of those moments. We're driving between locations. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the road which we were driving along with the, the camper van which you saw early in the film. Um, and it was just one of those moments, you know, where the light was hitting the top of the mountain in the distance. And we it just went, wow, we've got to stop. Mm. And so we stopped and we took the pictures and we were there again. We were there for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. The light disappeared and we carried on. You know, and that was the joy of it. That, you know, the joy of this, the, yeah. the trip, really, being able to see that moment of light and just go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I want that. And then all of a sudden it's gone. You know, it was um, uh, and handheld high res. You know, the the details that I managed to capture in the in, in the in the top of the mountain yeah. and everything. It was just amazing. It was so much fun. This image um, is getting so many likes. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, the comments I'm, I'm coming enjoying, through. I'm, I'm really glad <laughs> because this has to be one of my favourite images is, from the trip. It is amazing. You know, the, yeah, the, 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 we were a long, quite a long way away. Um, yeah. and it was oh, it was just so beautiful. It was such a again. Well, there was actually, um, we were stopped there and we actually had two couples driving this route as well, stop at different times and just go, what are you taking a picture of? And <laughs> we said this and they went, oh yes, we'll take a picture oh. of that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was, it was a really, really, um, again, just a moment of beautifulness. Yes. Yeah, it was lovely. Uh, that light is just yeah, it was. It was beautiful. Just, Claire, yeah. great minds, Claire. Light is amazing. Absolutely. It is fantastic. Cool. Wonderful. And those are your images. I mean, I'm sure you have thousands to go through. Yes. Uh, Hundreds of thousands. One of the things I will just add as a, as a closing part is I think both Moises and I underestimated how long it will take to go through all those images yes. and edit those images. You take you know, one this angle, uh, oh, then move exactly. a little bit and then which do one, this angle. Which one do we want to share? <laughs> you know, do we want to share all of them? Of course we want to share all of them. Of course. But which ones do we actually end up sharing? Um, and, and which ones will probably stay on a hard drive for another couple of years and then we'll... They uh, might come back out Dust them of off years. a little bit and have yeah, another look. absolutely. Exactly. And you can follow Tom and Moises on Instagram. Um, so check them out because they will be sharing more amazing images. Um, we've also got an Instagram takeover coming up yep. with Tom um, in the next few months. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be posting about it over on omsystem.cameras. Um, and yeah, the, thank you for coming. Thank you for Thanks sharing so for me. these incredible images. And I just I can't wait to see more. And now I want to go to Iceland. And so you should. <laughs> and absolutely so you should because it is an, an amazing place and, and one... I think I don't think there should be any photographer. I was going to say landscape photographer, but I don't think any photographer should miss out on, on Iceland. You know? No, do, it's do, an incredible. Do, it's, it's so a, much to see. Go and do it once. You know, and it doesn't really matter when you go, but just just go and do it once because it is a, an amazing yeah. place. That's Claire's right. been. She absolutely loved it. I think mm. she got some some interesting weather, some interesting Icelandic uh, well, weather. Well, there was certainly some interesting weather at times. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I've seen a video of Tom which we haven't shared, which is him. Uh, filming himself talking, walking through this. Is it hail or is it is it the uh, no? It was it sandstorm. Was, it was just insane wind yeah. on a black sand beach. Oh. Um, and and I, I don't even know what speeds the winds were, but literally you could barely stand up. Wow. Um, we had to abandon it actually because it was getting too windy, um, and we actually ended up having to drive and just find a little. Um, uh, we only drove a few hundred meters to actually park the van behind a bus. <laughs> To actually protect ourselves from the wind because we were it was it was getting that windy. 
Yeah, there we go. Look, you. Oh, there this he is, is. This is me looking really happy. Um, <laughs> this is actually the Diamond Ice Beach, um, so you, you can't see the the, the the chunks of ice. Yeah. But um, uh, we 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 done a quick shoot there and had to abandon it because it was just getting too windy. Yeah. It was, it was... Hello. Hopefully we're back. I hope we're back. I can't see anything on the screen, so I'm assuming we are back and yeah. we are live. Uh, we had a little power cut there, but actually perfectly timed because we were just about to wrap up. Absolutely. And thank you all for joining us. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Tom, for, for having, having, having a chat with me. Thank you all for your questions. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed uh, looking at Tom's beautiful images and hearing about his incredible adventure. Um, let us know in the comments where you're going to go on your next adventure. We can't wait to see the pictures. Keep us tagged in. And hopefully you'll have both Claire and I back for the next stream. It will be World Photography Day on the 19th of August. Stay tuned for more information. Um, yeah, and have a great evening or morning.